up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children, but this is for everyone that even knows the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and for those that don't know. Because today we're going to learn what happened with Todd Beamer. And we know that he was on one of the planes at 9-11. And when we get through with this lesson, you are going to know Christ as Savior. This is one of the most touching lessons that the Lord has ever given to me. And this is to be the one. You must be the one that is willing to honor the Lord in everything that you do. And this can happen for every true believer. Every true believer must show God's love. This is the most important thing that we love one another. Now this is our Bible verse that I pray that all of you are listening to and truly memorizing this verse. And this is what we are to do as a child of God. Now if you're not a child of God, you can't love. Matthew 5, 44. I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them, that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So you can memorize this Bible verse and you obey it. You see, we must obey the word of God or we will not receive the blessings that God has promised to us. So we're going to be in 1 John. Now these lessons are important for every believer. And you can't say, I can't do that because Christ wants to do it through you. So he says in 1 John 2, now 1 John shows us that we can know that we're a child of God. And we're gonna learn more about that through these lessons. He says in verse six of chapter two of 1 John, he that uh, saith he abideth in him, in Christ, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. And then in verse seven, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. And we know that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we know that we can have this truth to teach people there's only one true God because he is in the beginning. He always has been and he always will be. There is not another God in the world that has no beginning and no ending. So you can never trust in any other God. So this is what his word is teaching us in verse eight. Again, a new commandment I write unto you which thing is true? His word is pure. His word is powerful. In him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not where he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. You see the difference in a true believer? You're in darkness, and you must be brought out of darkness into light out of the power of Satan unto God. And we pray that you will do that today. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice in thee today. We thank thee that thou hast given 
us thy son. Our heavenly father has given us his only son to come to this earth to die that we could have eternal life and that his blood cleanses from all sin. So we're praying for 100 fold today as we teach these truths may they pierce the hearts of each of us that we will not hate another person but to love one another as thou hast loved us by this shall all men know you are my disciples if we have love one for another thank thee for hearing and answering our prayer today in christ's name i pray amen so we learned how this was in 9 11 how todd beamer was on the last plane the first two had gone into the Twin Towers, and then the third one had gone into the Pentagon. And before this happened, they had gone on vacation to Italy and came back on 9-10. They had been traveling most of the night to get back. They got back late. Their parents had kept these grandchildren and when they got back late he went upstairs to put the children to bed he was a loving father like his father had been he knew what that was and then Lisa of course she went to get everything prepared for bedtime because they their bodies were still on Italy time so she went to bed at nine o'clock. He put the children to bed. The next morning when they got up, it was amazing how when they got up the next morning, he got up the next morning, he had to go fly to San Francisco with his business. But as they were coming back home that night, Lisa was studying the word of God and Todd was preparing for his office work. She had been studying because she was in the ladies' Bible class and it was her turn to give a lesson out on Esther. Now we know the story about Esther. And as she was preparing for that, she knew that God was omnipotent. He's all knowing. So Esther had to go into the queen, to the king, and she wasn't supposed to go in to the king unless she was invited. This, was, this could have meant death for her, but her uncle, Mordecai, that had raised her and never told anyone that she was a Jew when they were in the Persian Empire. Now this Persian Empire went from India all the way up here to Egypt. All of this was where the Jews lived. And she didn't, he knew not to tell anyone. But Haman hated the Jews. Haman wanted to kill all the Jews. So he got the king to sign a decree that all the Jews would be killed. So she went in to him and Mordecai told her, he said, if you die, you die. And she knew that she was going to go in and she told him the story. I can't go into the story. It's the most beautiful story in the world of how love can change your life toward every person you come in contact with. So Mordecai would not bow down to Haman and Haman hated him. He hated him. So she went in and she, her plan was what Mordecai had taught her to do to say to the king. She went in and she said, this is what God has done, Mordecai told her, that he has put you here for such a time as this. This was the greatest story for her, for Lisa, when all these things happened. And this is what Todd wants every one of you to do the same thing that he did, to be the one to stand up for Christ in every situation of your life. So as she was preparing for that lesson, after she got home, she was thinking about it and what a, what a wonderful story this is and how terrible it is for people to hate another person. 
So her and Todd had always known the love of God in their home and their parents had taught the word of God. And remember we went through this story of how Lisa, how she truly lost her father and knew what death was. Todd had never known this in his close family. So every one of us are going to face death. We must understand this. So the next morning he got up and she was still sleeping. And she didn't say goodbye to Todd or he didn't kiss her goodbye because he was supposed to be back that same evening. So he got in his car and the first thing he did, he had his memory verses there in the car so he could memorize his Bible verses. And he was thinking about this beautiful day. You see, this is so wonderful for us to understand God's beautiful creation. And he was thinking this would be a good day to go out and bat a ball because he loved playing ball. But he knew that he was going to have time to prepare for his work at the office. So he thought this will be six hours I can work. So he saw the beautiful sky and all of the wonderful things. And this was 9-11, the day he was going to get on the plane. And he lived in Newark, New Jersey. So he got on the plane and usually there was a long wait, but this time there wasn't. But the runway, he had to stay there for 40 minutes. So when he was in row 10 on this plane and they knew something had happened when they left New York. They could see the smoke coming up from New York. They had no idea what had happened. And the pilots said good morning, but they saw a sign, beware cockpit intrusion. And the, they said, this is confirmed something had happened in the cockpit. So when they were near Cleveland, they saw that they were, this was the traffic controller talking, and the pilot said, good morning, as always. But then there was a violent, violent noises, scuffling, and everything upset. And they heard this man with a great accent saying, get out of here, get out of here, to the pilot and the co-pilot. So they don't know what's happening, but all of a sudden, Todd felt something, a plan to begin. And he knew the plane was bouncing up and down, up and down. And then when this great rough accent said to the people, he said, this is the pilot, remain sitting, remaining sitting. And he knew this was not the grammar of a pilot, remaining sitting. And then the plane was bouncing up and down. They didn't know where they were going. They wondered if they were going back to New York. But then all of a sudden, the, the hijackers that had hijacked the plane said, we have a bomb. We have a bomb. So when they knew that they had been hijacked, they said, we must do something. That was the first thought of everybody that was on the plane. So Todd didn't stay in seat 10 and row 10 where he had been because the guy with the bomb told him to go to row 27. And they were screaming at these people. So he sat down by the flight attendant. So he, there was another man on the plane in the fourth row. His name was Tom. He called his wife and told her that they had been hijacked and for her to call the authorities. And he said, there is a bomb on the plane and we don't know what has happened to the pilot and the co-pilot. They were lying away from where they had been, not in the cockpit. So the plane then made another turn 
and they wondered, where is this plane going? Oh, maybe we're going back to New York. Oh, no. Tom's wife said, no, this plane is on a suicide mission. She knew this. She said, because they have already gone killed all of these people that were on the two planes that went into the Twin Towers. They had no idea that President Bush had ordered all of the planes to land because the, the two men that were in the cockpit, still, they did not know what President Bush had done. He said that America has was under a deadly terrorist attack. And there was another man, Jeremy, he called his wife and she confirmed that this was true, that the Twin Towers had already hit, the, the planes had already hit the Twin Towers and that's where the smoke was coming from. So they could understand that. So now they're in control of the flight. They turned the automatic switch off and this began to change speeds up and down, plunging up and down, and they knew that they were going to have to rush these hijackers. So what happened to Todd, Todd knew what to do. He was in row 27 and he was by the flight attendant. So he calls on the air phone. This was the greatest thing that God led him to do. So the authorities would know what was happening. So he called the GTE desk and Mrs. Jefferson answered the phone. And this, she was so nervous because she knew this was a plane that had been hijacked. So Todd wanted this to be the person that would know what to do. So when she, he started talking to her, she got the authorities to listen in. And she prayed that she would be calm. And he to, she told him that this was Mrs. Jefferson and she wanted him to give her all the information that he could of the things that were happening. So Todd obeyed what she said. He, she, he said the attendant, flight attendant told him all of these truths. There were 27 passengers in coach, no children, 10 in first class, and five flight attendants, and three hijackers, two with knives and one with a bomb. And they were unassured, unassured, not assured what had happened to the pilots if they were just lying there by the, from the pain or from all that they had done and didn't know if they were dead or not. So as soon as he began telling her all of these truths, he knew that this was what God wanted him to do. So Tom now, back in the fourth row, when the news of the Pentagon, she told him that the third plane had gone into the Pentagon. So Jeremy and Tom both were in, in Blessed. It was such a blessing for them to be able to get their wives on the phone. So he told his wife that they were talking about doing something to take charge of their flight. She told him to go to it. So Todd listened to Mrs. Jefferson's instructions. She said if he felt he was risking his life talking to her, he was welcome to put the phone down, but without hanging up. Todd said he was not being threatened, but wondered what he, if he should call his wife. And he, she said, I will connect you if you want to. Todd hesitated. He said he just wanted to let someone know what was going on in the cockpit that would, in the airplane and the cockpit that would help others that maybe were on the ground. Because 
Jeremy's wife and Tom's wife had both said, and Mrs. Jefferson, that this plane was headed for another landmark in the United States landmark, possibly the White House or the Capitol building. Now, I want all of you, by the time we get through with these lessons, to know what it's like to leave home, one member of a family. And I want you to know if you could do the same thing that Todd and these men did and women that was on that plane. So Todd's vi voice tightened. Now he said, we're going down, 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 back up. Oh no, oh, lo oh Lord Jesus, help me, help me, his voice trembling. Lisa, he said, and she said, Mrs. Ferguson Jefferson said, what? She said, Lisa's my name. He said, that's my wife's name. Todd felt the plane again going down and he yelled, Mrs. Jefferson, Mrs. Jefferson. She said, I'm still here, I'm still here. And she was so amazed at his calmness, how calm he could be to tell her every detail of everything that was happening. So they knew that something had to be done. So now Jeremy, the other person that had his wife on the phone, she, he told her they were going to rush the hijackers. And of course she said to go for it. And Tom's wife was a flight attendant and they had been taught not to do anything if they were hijacked. But he overruled in what she said and he knew, he knew that he was going to help everyone. So now at the Beamer home, all of this is going on and think of all the families you must understand of all the families that this affected and how hatred does these things for another person to want to kill another person. So we see Lisa, here she is back home and she's wondering, she's crying. And her son, three and a half year old David, wanted to know what was wrong. And she said, I don't know where daddy is right now. So she called his business phone and there was no answer. She left a message. Todd, I don't know where you are and I need to hear from you. The phone rang, she answered. When she answered, nobody was on the other end. So she called. Continental Airlines and she called the United Airlines. She didn't get any answer from them. Now I want to ask all of you that's listening today, if you should be on a plane knowing that you were hijacked or you were going somewhere to leave your family, would your family know that you were ready to meet your Lord? This is, I have prayed for 100 fold in this city. Now is the time for you to understand that you could leave your home and never return to your family. The only hope that you can give them is to know that you're a child of God. We're gonna give the rest of this to you next week, but today is the day of salvation. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How could Todd be so calm? How did he know who to call? Because God was guiding him to the very best thing that he could do for Lisa, those boys, and this nation. So Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is for every person that's in the world. So you can put your name here, 1 Corinthians, 15, 3, and 4. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died instead of you. And when you find out that you're a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, 
even to them that believe on his name. Todd and Lisa, with their life, they knew what redemption was. They knew how much God loved them. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Now today, you can receive this gift of eternal life. By his own blood, Christ entered in once into the holy place. He died, and he's back in heaven today, preparing a place for all of us, and coming soon in the clouds to take us to be with him where he is. Now, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior? Do you know what that means? It means by faith, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and I have eternal life and forgiveness of sin. You see, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I must do this by faith, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, that's when you call upon Jesus Christ, it's believing in him. This is why every person that's listening today can accept this gift of eternal life. And you then, as a child of God, can ask, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. John 15, 7. Now, I want you to know that I'm praying for every person that's listening 100-fold. So it's not his will that you should perish, that you're going to come to repentance today. This is the day of salvation for every person that's listening. Call upon him to save you, and he will. Missionary today.